hi guys we're gonna try this again because my stupid camera keeps going <laughs> no storage anyway welcome it is almost 2020 and i decided that while we are on winter break from school now would be a good time to do a couple of videos including a new year's resolution video my kids are downstairs playing minecraft together fingers crossed they actually stay down there and stay quiet so that i can do this video quick <sighs> anyway, this is my bullet journal. This is what I use for weight loss type stuff. And I decided to write my New Year's resolutions in here because I thought it would be a easy place to keep going back and looking and saying, yeah, <laughs> that's what we're working on this year. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's where I log my stuff. It's where I do these cool little charts so I can mark down as I lose weight. That's my next goal, by the way. Um, and I've got my New Year's resolutions in here, so I'm going to be looking down at this a little bit to uh, remind myself of what what we're talking about. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so number one, my New Year's resolution is to convert my family to a low carb diet, the entire household. And if you've been here a while, you know that uh, three years ago, I had gastric bypass surgery. I lost my first 90 pounds like that because of the surgery. Um, but after the first year, I started to struggle to lose weight again. Not that it wasn't coming off, but it's just that it was really, really slow. So two years ago, my husband and I started doing the ketogenic diet. My husband has stuck to keto perfectly for the last two years, and he's lost over like 120 pounds now. It's nuts. He's done amazingly. I struggle. Some days I'm keto. Some days I'm low carb. Some days I am none of the above. <laughs> and yeah, it sucks. Anyway, I want to convert the entire house. Number one, it's easier to stick to this way of eating if you don't have the junk in the house. And we have a tendency to let the kids eat the junk. And they're kids. They don't need junk. They don't need all that candy and cookies and processed crap that we're not eating and that I don't want to eat, but it's really hard to not eat it when it's right there. So getting all the junk out and replacing it with lower carb, healthier options. Um, at no point are we going to be counting carbs for the kids. They don't need to be keto. We just want them to have better choices to make when they're at home, when they're at school, and they're having lunch, they can eat whatever they want at school, whatever the, the school provides for lunch, I don't care. But I want them to have healthier options here at home. Now, our nine-year-old son was recently diagnosed with ADHD. We have been kind of reaching out, and I, I like to call them branches of the tree, to help him. Um, he's fallen behind in school a little bit. We want to get him caught up and get him back to doing really well because he's an extremely intelligent little boy. He is so damn smart. He just really struggles to focus and to stay on task. So behavioral therapist, medication, his, his general med doctor, um, we're working on getting an IEP written for him at school. There's all of these branches that we are reaching from and pulling what we can to try and help him. And we're trying to look at some more kind of homeopathic ways of helping him too. We started him on a magnesium supplement every night because he was getting up at 4.30 in the morning. Um, the magnesium has helped him sleep in until like 6 o'clock now. That's still way too damn early to get up. <laughs> but you can see that one little adjustment helped him sleep longer, helped him sleep better, and will help him in the long run. Better quality sleep, easier to pay attention. So one of the things then is removing all of the, the sugar and the refined carbs and yuck and junk from his diet and from all of our diets um, to try and help his brain do better, his brain be healthier, and him be able to focus more without his body going all the time. Because let's face it, anybody who has a lot of sugar is going to be all the time. So this is part for him, for his ADHD, and to hope that this can improve things for him. Um, 
but it's also just in general for all of us. So we all make better choices. We're all living a better, healthier lifestyle. And so that we're setting our kids up to have a healthier future and a healthier adulthood. So that is one of my goals. Number one. Number two, stick to the monthly budget. <laughs> I am really, really bad about this. I will admit. Um, I can't and I shouldn't comfort eat anymore. So I admit sometimes I comfort shop. Transfer addiction after gastric bypass surgery is a real thing and it can come in so many forms. So my goal is to stick to our monthly household budget. Now we have a grocery budget and we have a household budget. If you want me to do a video more specifics on all these things, I can let me know. Um, but we have a certain amount that we spend every week at Walmart. We have a certain amount that we spend every week at Costco. And then we have a certain amount that is just a monthly budget to spend on um, things that are not food. So cleaning products, hair, shampoo, things that are needed around the house. It, it's I can explain it more if you want me to. Um, but sticking to that budget and doing my best to help remove debt instead of increase debt. And I'm bad at that. I need to stop buying things on Zulily. That's just for real. <laughs> Number three, no drinking alcohol at all whatsoever. Now, three years ago when I had my gastric bypass surgery, one of the rules that they gave me for the surgery was no drinking at all whatsoever for the rest of your life because there is no safe amount of alcohol for a gastric bypass patient. I know, it sucks. And I scoffed at this for a long time and I drank anyway. The last six months, I don't know what has changed and I don't know what the shift in my physiology has been. Um, no matter how much I play by the rules, no matter how safe I try to be, um, I don't know when my body will be okay with alcohol and when it will be very, 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 very not okay. I have had three or four incidents now where I went from feeling perfectly fine, just kind of buzzed, not drunk, just buzzed, feeling good. I was doing what I was supposed to do, eating, drinking water and having some wine and not, you know, not even drinking anything crazy. And all of a sudden, I would be blackout drunk. I had no idea where I was. I was not able to take care of myself. Um, my husband has had to take care of me. And it's really scary because three to five hours suddenly disappeared where I couldn't remember anything at all. I, I would wake up somewhere and not know how I got there. And that's scary as hell. And I don't know why it's happening, but I know that I've been breaking the rule of drinking and it needs to stop because how do I know when the next time I'm going to go from, I might, you know, like I might just be buzzed this time and then the next time I'm blackout drunk and then the third time I might die. I mean, I know that sounds dramatic, but that's why they tell you not to drink after you've had this surgery. You don't know. There's no way of knowing how much is enough, how much is too much, and how much is deadly when you've had gastric bypass surgery. And I don't want to find out the hard way. I don't want my family to find out. I don't want anybody to find out. And I have said this before. I am a caregiver. I hate being taken care of. You know, when I'm sick, yeah, okay, fine. I want somebody to be like, bring me some chicken noodle soup or something. But... The fact that somebody else had to take care of me because I couldn't take care of myself in those moments, I freaking hated it. And not having any idea of what happened and having to hear through other people what happened during those three incidents, I freaking hate. And I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. Alcohol is not that much fun and it is not worth it. It's not worth it to accidentally hurt myself or somebody else just to get a buzz. So, 
and I've already implemented this. I've already started this, but I just wanted to like cement that <laughs> as one of my New Year's resolutions, not just for 2020, but like the rest of my life. No, no more alcohol. Done. It's just not worth it. I'll stick to my coffee. Coffee's more fun anyway. Alright, um, number four kind of almost goes along with number three. I want to log and make sure that I am drinking 64 ounces of water or well of fluids, any fluids a day. Now that is the goal that my surgeon set for me after I had my surgery. 64 ounces of fluid. It does not have to be water, but a some sort of fluid every day. Mostly what I drink is water, coffee. I've just recently started drinking hot tea at night. Um, sometimes Crystal Light. I really like the the Crystal Light iced tea with lemon. I think that's delightful. Um, so any of those non-alcoholic, obviously, um, but sugar-free, non-alcoholic, um, as low cal and low carb as possible to boost my fluid intake. I am thirsty as hell lately, and I know it's because I'm not drinking enough, or I'm drinking a couple of cups of coffee and then nothing else until after dinner or something. I don't know. And then I'm up all night peeing because I drank like seven bottles after dinner. <laughs> so my goal is to not only drink it, but log it so that I know, okay, I've hit 64 ounces. I've hit my goal for the day. Anything beyond this is fabulous and wonderful and great, but I can at least relax and say, I hit my goal. Number five, exercise at least three times a week. Before I had my hysterectomy, I was doing this and I, I like exercising. I actually really enjoy it. There are certain things I enjoy more than others. I really enjoy weightlifting. I hate cardio, <laughs> but we have built a little like gym down in our basement and um, we've got all the equipment and stuff down there. It was super easy for me to just go downstairs, do my workout, and come back up. I didn't have to worry about babysitters. I didn't have to worry about the weather. I didn't have to drive anywhere. The kids could join me and work out with me if they wanted to. Or I could say, no, you have to stay upstairs while mommy does this because mommy needs some alone time. <laughs> it's good for both with the kids and without the kids. But after the hysterectomy and I was on restriction for a while and I couldn't work out and then the depression hit really hard and then I wasn't working out and then it's just, it's carried on. I haven't been working out um, at all and it sucks. So my goal is three times a week. If I do more, awesome. I don't want to do less than that and I want to get back to doing it because it feels good. I feel good about myself and I have more energy and my body just feels better when I work out. So Pilates, weightlifting, a little bit of yoga, I don't know, but mostly Pilates and weights I enjoy. So three times a week, that is my goal. Number six, stay carb, low carb, stay keto. None of this, I've been pretty good for the last like month or two or however long it's been now, I don't know. But I still find myself cheating when I shouldn't, eating things that are higher in carbs not so much sugar it's i really don't care too much about the sugar but it, it's eating the higher carb foods that i shouldn't be eating um on christmas day i swear to god i ate my weight in green bean casserole obviously not in one sitting i don't have that ability but like throughout the day of christmas day i ate so much green bean casserole and it was so delicious which i think is fine there's no reason you can't have a celebration. There's no reason you can't enjoy Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's. But it's got to stop. The next day can't also be a celebration. And the next week also be. And that's been my problem is I'll have a cheat day. I'll have a cheat meal. The, the, the cheat meal becomes a cheat day. The cheat day becomes a cheat weekend. The cheat weekend becomes a cheat week. And before I know it, holy crap, the whole month I've eaten a crap ton of carbs. So... <sighs> I have set the goal of 50 carbs or less. Um, that is very low carb. It's actually lower carb than my dietitian would like, but I feel good when I stay under 50 carbs. If I can stay under 20 carbs that day, awesome. I'm going to stick to keto foods. I'm going to stick to low carb foods. I'm going to stick to the sugar-free, which isn't really that hard for me anymore. It used to be 
really hard, but, um, but staying under that 50 cards, shooting for 20 if I can, but definitely staying under the 50 because my body just feels better when I don't eat the carbs, when I don't eat the sugar. It's not even about losing weight. It's about feeling good. Does this help me lose weight? Heck yeah, it does. Um, but it just, I just feel better. I feel less tired. I feel less th lethargic. Um, I get like a stomach ache if I eat too many carbs and sugar and stuff. And part of that is from the surgery. And part of that is just the way I'm made up. I'm, I'm an endomorph. If you know what that is, give me a little like. Eh, 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 endomorphs, yeah. This girl can pack on weight like that. And it takes forever for me to lose it. So the lower carb I stay, the easier it is for me to lose weight and the better I feel in general. So stay low carb. Number, what are we at? We're at like seven. Number seven, vitamins. Oh my God, vitamins. Again, one of the rules that I was given three years ago when I had surgery. I had a list of vitamins that I have to take every day. And some of those vitamins I have to take multiple times a day. I can't take one multivitamin a day. I am supposed to be taking two a day. I can't take one calcium supplement a day. I'm supposed to be taking three a day. Um, so I need to get better at kind of breaking it up and taking them throughout the day so that my body is absorbing them better. Right now, I have one of those little pill cases and I have all of my stuff in there. Um, but I only have like one multivitamin. I haven't been taking one in the morning. I take one in the evening and that's it. And that's not enough. I haven't been taking any calcium supplements at all. That's not good, obviously. So kind of breaking some of that up. I should probably take my thyroid medication in the morning because I don't have any dairy in the morning. I drink black coffee. Um, I just, it's easier if I don't put anything in my coffee. I love creamer. Don't get me wrong. Holy mother of God, I love creamer, but it just, it adds up too many carbs, too many calories, way too fast if I put creamer in my coffee. So I don't, I sometimes put protein shake in my coffee, but I'm trying to do intermittent fasting also. So I've not been doing that either. Anyway, so breaking the vitamins up, setting up alerts on my phone to remind me getting the pillowcase that has the AM and the PM, taking stuff with me to work, taking my calcium supplements with me to work so that I can take them um, during my lunch break. There's no reason I can't take one of my calciums during my lunch break. Take one after I eat lunch, take one after I eat supper, maybe another one before I go to bed. I don't know. Figure out a good schedule and stick to it because I know part of the reason I've been feeling so tired and lethargic and just kind of cruddy is because I'm not taking my vitamins and my hair. Oh girl, I am trying. I am trying with the curly girl method to make it look nice and curly. I am not succeeding in getting enough protein, I think, and not enough vitamins and it's falling out again. <sighs> and it's nobody's fault but my own. So vitamins, vitamins, vitamins. <laughs> So anyway, yes, everybody in my family, low carb, keto, let's eat healthy, making sure I'm drinking all of my water and then some, making sure I'm taking all of my vitamins and spacing them out so that my body has a chance to actually absorb because I don't absorb things very well because of the surgery. So spacing those vitamins out so that I'm actually getting the nutrients that I'm supposed to be getting, exercising three times a week, and no alcohol. Who needs those stupid carbs? And those stupid calories anyway. Not me. My big butt don't need that. And sticking to a monthly budget because I spend too much money. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. As always, feel, feel free to like and share and subscribe. You got any ideas for how to help these kids eat low carb? Let me know. Write it below. I need help. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. All right. Let me get closer. Are you ready?